Alleluia. Blessed are you, holy and living one. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our judge, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of dark shadows, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when div dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burdens and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled up in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually and then shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and a family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time had come for her to deliver a child, and she gave birth to the firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those who He favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that had taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and a child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all of these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. We cannot approach the manger of the Christ child in the same way that we approach the manger, the cradle of a regular child. Rather, when we go to his manger, something happens and we cannot leave it again the same. Here we must collapse or either know the mercy of God directed towards us. What does that mean? It is God Himself. The Lord, the Creator of all things, who is so small here, who is hidden in the corner, who enters the plainness of the world, who meets us in the helplessness, in the defenselessness of a child, and wants to be with us. And He does this not out of playfulness or out of sport, but in order to show us who He is, show us where He is, and to show us that the throne of God in the world is not on human thrones, but in human depths, right there in the manger. Words from Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Reflecting on those words in the God that Dietrich Bonhoeffer is talking about, the same God who enters the world this night, our God, and is first placed into a manger. I can't help but think that it is hard for us to imagine the fullest possibility of what that really looked like or felt like for Mary and Joseph, that is for their newborn infant to be born and immediately placed into a place that was meant for animals to feed from. I believe that it's hard for us to imagine that, not only because we've created a narrative of the Christmas story that is beautiful and sweet and charming, which isn't a bad thing, but because our modern perspective on bringing children into this world takes away the shock value that this nativity story should really be giving us. I often think at Christmas time about my own experience of uh, being a father in the days when my wife April was pregnant with our twins. It was a frightening time for both of us. All of the doctor's appointments, all of the sonograms, all of the emergency room visits, all of the checkups, some even on Christmas Eve, 
all the way through to the day the boys were born and beyond as they laid their little heads down in the NICU cribs. With each visit, with each appointment, with each emergency room trip, that level of anxiety grew and grew and grew. And we just had this weird feeling that something might not be right or a piece of bad news might befall us. And I think I held my breath every time that we experienced one of those appointments or new stage of the pregnancy. And yet even in all of the fearfulness that was there, we still had a safety net. The safety net of modern medicine, and with it came the idea that should something be wrong, God forbid should something be wrong, science, technology, doctors, they were there to try and do something about it, to make it better. Most of us sitting here this evening, we don't know a time in our lives without doctors in modern medicine that has impacted our life probably for the positive But Mary and Joseph, the baby Jesus himself, they didn't have any of that. They only had a manger. The day our boys were healthy enough to come home from the NICU, the nurses literally unplugged them and handed them to us. All of the wires, the sensors, the things that connected them to the fancy computers and to the monitors that would alert the entire NICU in a second if something was wrong, it was all gone in an instant. And all we were left with was, congratulations, you can take your babies home now. The only thing that we had to prove of our parenting skills on the day we could take them home was that we could buckle them safely into their spaceship-sized car seat that looked like it belonged on SpaceX. Yet another piece of irony about this Christmas nativity, how shocking it should be for us. After we passed our test, we went off. I drove us home in the snow, a brand new father. I had two new lives to care for, and I thought to myself, how is this even legal? How am I supposed to know what to do? How am I going to know if they're breathing? How am I going to know if their heart rate's okay? How am I going to know if their oxygen levels are where they need to be? Why was there no transition here, right? Couldn't we have just gone from the wires to another room in the hospital where it was a little bit more quiet, but the nursing staff was there just in case something happened? This is craziness, I thought to myself. I'm sure that most of us have had a similar experience, whether it's caring for our own children, grandchildren, brothers, sisters, nieces, nephews, all of the gamut. And yet, yet we're here this evening listening to this story that is so dear to our hearts. The story of a baby being born into this world and laid directly into that place where the pigs and the cows and the sheep were likely feeding only hours, if not moments, before. There are no wires. There are no health monitors. There are no spaceship-sized car seats. And yet Mary, Mary gazes into her child's eyes treasures and ponders all of these things in her heart. How beautiful is that? Makes me sound like a crazy person. I have to believe in my heart of hearts that Mary did just this because somehow, some way she knew that that little one lying there in the manger didn't just represent the goodness and loving kindness of God, but was what is the goodness and loving kindness of God. And because of this, I have to believe that Mary knew in her heart of hearts that all will be well. Finally, all will be well with this world. She's absolutely right, my friends. All will be well. I know it's hard for us to believe sometimes. Hard for us to see, but just as it was with Mary and Joseph and the shepherds and all who gathered round this night to behold the mystery of God born into human flesh, all will be well for us right here, right now. And I know all will be well, not just because my faith tells me so, not just because the Bible tells me so, but because you, Grace Church, 
You, community of love, community of honest human endeavor, community of unresolved human struggle, you show me that all will be well. Not all that often, if ever for some clergy, to have four register books of the church open on one desk all at the same time. One for marriage, one for baptism, one for burials, and one for our Sunday services. But I had the blessed opportunity to fill in the blanks of those pages just a few short days ago, and all within about a 24-hour period. And I had the opportunity to do that because of you. You who wish to be here, and to be part of the continuation of this very story that we are hearing right here, right now one of the most special moments that I've ever experienced as a priest and one that I will treasure and ponder in my heart. What makes it special is that if you really think about it, those services literally back to back to back to back, they help to celebrate the Christmas story to its fullest. The love of God that bonds tightly together a new couple in marriage the same love that manifests itself this evening is, and is emptied right there into the manger. The baptism of a child and the ministry that His baptism will call Him to is the same baptism that Christ shares with us right here, right now. And what is more, that ministry, the baptism that His ministry calls Him to, is foreshadowed by the coming of the good news, not to kings and to rulers of the world, but to lowly shepherds in the field the low of society that Jesus Himself will care for all the days of His life and calls us to care for as well. In the burial service, best called a celebration of life, because that is what God gives to us tonight through His coming into the world, life. And yet, it will take death on the cross to make life a possibility for us, but the moment of triumph will ensue on Easter morning, and that moment cannot come without the manger. All of that, that was celebrated right here with this community and is represented right here, right now, with the coming of Jesus, the little babe, into our lives once again. But what makes all of this all the more special is that it tells me that you are here this evening not just because you want to witness and to feel and to take in the magic that truly fills our hearts on this day and this time of year, but instead because you, in your heart of hearts, like Mary, you know that all will be well too. Because while Christmas magic is a magnificent gift and is a thing that we all need My friends, it can only fill our hearts but for a few short days each year, but the hope and the love of God, that can fill them for a lifetime. For that, I say, Alleluia, Alleluia, and I thank you for holding on to that hope. God is here, my friends and always will be for the hopes and the fears of all the years past, present, and yet to come. They are met in thee tonight. They are met in the manger of Christ, for it is God Himself, the Lord and Creator of all things, who is so small, who is hidden here in the corner, who enters the loneliness and the plainness of the world, who meets us in the independence and the helplessness and the defenselessness of a child who wants to be with us. For that, we celebrate, we ponder, we treasure all these things in our hearts that the God of this world, the God who cares for us as a parent cares for a child, that God comes to us and lies in nothing but the manger. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard Mary pondered all of these words, treasured them in her heart. Amen.
If you're able, I invite you to stand and say with me the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, and for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Loving God, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you show us the nature and destiny of your creation and salvation. On this most holy night, of our Lord's birth. May we find peace, joy, and contentment in this holy season. Let us pray for ourselves and all those in need of our prayers, saying, God of life and love, hear our prayer. Bless Grace Church, stable of strangers and angels, and continue to make this a community that seeks to reflect your glory and humility. God of life and love. Bless Yorktown, community of honest human endeavor and unresolved human struggle. And continue to make it a community where your word is made flesh. God of life and love. Bless your church throughout the world and be close to everyone who celebrates your son's birth this holy season. God of life and love, bless those people and places that long to hear the angel's message of peace and goodwill. God of life and love, most of all, bless those who, like the Holy Family, have no place to stay, no security to rely on, and are strangers and pilgrims on earth. God of life and love. And finally, bless those with whom we have shared Christmases past and with whom in glory we long to share Christmas again because of your Son who came to live with us that we might forever live with you, God of life and love. Holy God, newborn child in whom heaven and earth meet, draw us near to you to kneel at your manger. Keep us close to you to enjoy the awe and wonder of your birth. In the freshness of your newborn life, give courage to all of us who want to begin again and all who need a fresh start and all who long for the freedom of your forgiveness. Grant your mercy to us who are weary and look for a place to rest in your presence. Renew us as heaven and earth meet that we might find our true life in you and with you even now, even here. Amen. Amen. Sisters, my brothers, my friends in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Good evening, Grace Church, and Merry Christmas. Thank you all so much for being here to worship with us and to celebrate the birth of Christ coming into our midst. It is a special honor and privilege to be among you this evening. Uh, just a word of welcome. Welcome all who have come long time before, all who are regulars and all who are newcomers. We welcome you to join us, uh, not just tonight, but each and every Sunday. And we hope that you find this place warming and welcoming. And if there's anything that we can do uh, as a church family to extend that love to your family, please let us know. Uh, we have a vestry person here today, Miss Diana Mason Smelt. Where is she's in the back in the red sweater and she's waving to everybody nicely. If you're a newcomer, uh, please let Diana know so that we can contact you and so that uh, I can take you for a cup of coffee and so that we can get to know you better and know how to serve uh, you and this community better. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here and uh, have a wonderful a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Christmas blessings. Let's see, all right, no announcements today. It's Christmas. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, and your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God, the holy things for the holy ones. You may be seated. My friends, those of us who are new tonight, we are able to share in both the bread and the wine together. Uh, if you would prefer bread and wine, I will dip it for you, and please hold out both of your hands as a signal to me that you want that. If you would prefer just the bread, put one arm over your chest. If you would prefer just the blessing, cross both arms over your chest. All are acceptable and uh, perfectly fine to receive the sacrament.
pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent His Son to take our nature upon Him, bless you this holy season. Scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your heart with the light of His holiness. May God, who set His angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. May God, who in the Word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you His peace and favor. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us sing out, my friends, Merry Christmas. forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.
Thank you.